One of my favorite black powder cartridges is 577 Snyder. Now the issue with 577 Snyder for a lot of people is they generally will use a projectile that measures 575, 577-ish. And that works out great when you have a case that has just been sized right out of the sizing die or is brand new. Now, as luck would have it, I was able to buy two boxes of these Magtech 24 gauge brass shot shell holes, which is what we use to make 577 Snyder cases. Now, I get the best accuracy using a 60 caliber flat based conical from X Ring Services. And it looks like this right here. Very nice looking. Now, the trouble is, you cannot fit this 60 caliber bullet into a case that has just been sized. It's not even close. You can, however, fit this 60 caliber projectile into a cartridge that has been once fired. Just a little bit of flare, and that thing will go right in there. No problem. So what a lot of folks will do after they have their brand new sized cases is they will load those 575 mini balls and they'll just go out and fire it at the dirt just so they have a fire-formed cartridge that they could load a projectile that they know works pretty well. But what I have found is you can actually get some decent accuracy using a projectile like this that you would use for your rifled musket. If you do a few things, one, make sure that that is cast out of pure lead. Do not use 30 to 1 or 20 to 1 or wheel weight lead. Ask me how I know that. Because it's too hard and it won't expand well enough. And the biggest thing is to fill in that hollow base with some kind of wax, paraffin wax, candle wax, whatever. This happens to be SPG lube. I find that works just fine. And if you do that and you load it with a stout enough charge, it will expand it enough to be able to catch that rifling and at least give you some decent accuracy. It still doesn't do as well as the 60 caliber fire formed cases, but it's better than nothing. Since we have a whole bunch of cases we need to fire form, I figured we'd do some experimenting on smokeless loads and some duplex loads and uh, whatever else we feel like. Now we have three loads assembled. One is a pure smokeless load, which any Snyder aficionado will tell you is not advised. Everyone pretty much will say, say the same thing, that the action of the Snyder is not strong enough to hold any smokeless loads, but I don't usually let bad ideas slow me down. I also like to live dangerously. So the smokeless load is 10 grains of unique. This is an emergency announcement from the editing department. It is not 10 grains of unique. It is 13 grains of unique. I repeat, 13 grains of unique. And now back to our regularly scheduled programming. With a 24 gauge half inch fiber cushion wad, seated on top of the powder, not compressed, just pushed down and seated on top of it with the same projectile for all of these, 575 pure lead mini ball with the base filled in with SPG lube. The next is a duplex load. It is 10 grains of Reloader 7 with 80 grains of 1F Swiss mixed together, half inch cushion wad, projectile on top. The last is a mostly smokeless load, with 10 grains of 3F Swiss at the bottom, it's what we call a reverse duplex or a Russian duplex, with 30 grains of accurate 5744 on top of it, cushion wad, seated against the powder, same projectile on top. All of these are large pistol primers, Winchester large pistol primers, standard stuff. The reason why I did the reversed duplex load or the Russian duplex load for the 30 grain smokeless is these cases are what are called balloon head cases. And you can see down in here that the primer actually sits higher than the base of the cartridge. And I didn't want to have smokeless, especially a slower burning smokeless like 5744, lower than the primer. I thought it might do some strange things. But I have done tests with reverse duplex loads in cap and ball revolvers that works pretty well. And I found that if you use just a little bit of black powder, you could light off smokeless that would be harder to light off otherwise. So that's how we did that. Same thing, 
10 grains of powder on the bottom, 3F Swiss, 30 grains of accurate 57 right on top, fiber cushion wad, and the same projectile on top of all of them. So here's how it went. All right, so this is 10 grains of Reloader 7 with 80 grains of 1F Swiss mixed together with a half inch fiber wad, 575 ball with the hollow cavity filled with black powder lube. Man. That rocks the shit out of that thing. Whoa, dang. Holy sh. 26, ah, you dirty, rotten scoundrel. My goodness. Mm-hmm. Man, that wallops them freaking targets. Yeah, I'll say. Felt that way from here, too. Yeah. yeah I bet. Ugh. Give me a number, you f junk. Want me to move it? I guess. Forward yeah. or back? Only got four more. Get some numbers off of it. Yeah, me too. Thirteen seventy. All right. Holy cow. Yeah, dang. <laughs> Thirteen seventy. Just not gonna do it, are you, you junk? Well, it gave us one. It's not gonna give us three though, not obviously. Any, not gonna give me any more. Aww. Oh, just a little too long, huh? I'll show you. Thirteen seventy-two. Ah. Wow, that just about takes the fun out of shooting, man. Holy cow. That bad, huh? Considerable. <laughs> you think those uh, them other ones are going to be worse? No, no, the re these other ones should be... Plinkers. Should be po donkey, man. All right, well. I hope you're right. I hope I'm right, too. So here's the one oddball. Let me try this here. That was adorable. Dang, that was just, that was just beautiful. That was adorable. Let me, let me see the press. All right. I didn't tell anybody what that was. A little stampage going on. Not horrible, though. Not horrible. Nah. Okay, huh? so these are 13 grains of unique with a half-inch fiber wad seated against the powder. Same ball, 575, with the hollow cavity filled full of black powder <coughs> grease. Grease. That last one was 873, but I had it marked as an odd ball, so I don't okay. think I'll count that one. What's that stuff that's coming flying that's out of the that barrel? Fiber wad. Oh! That had a little bit of a hang. Did you hear that? Yeah, I did. I, I felt it. Just just a little. 847. same well that's just adorable well it sure is shooting straight yeah i don't have to aim a mile underneath it that's good man 76 man i'm not getting any usable chronograph numbers today let me move up a little bit okay Eight seventy four. The fiber wad is coming apart and it's screaming through there. Yeah. At it throws confetti. It, I don't it know is. if you can see it on the camera. Ah, uh, let me see. Yeah, you can see it. Eight forty six. Well, that seemed pretty consistent. The yeah. ones that I got to read. 
So that was pure smokeless right there. That was not a duplex or anything. That was pure smokeless. And that's unique? Unique. 13 grand unique. is unique. Unique seems to work just fine. It works on most things. Yeah. That's why I thought it would work with the uh, cap and ball revolver, but not without a little bit of black powder help. Yeah, not without, uh, not without something to light it off. Okay, now here things might get kind of interesting. So this is 10 grains of 3F Swiss first with 30 grains of 5744 on top of it with a half inch fiber wad and the same ball, bullet, conical, whatever you'd like to call it. <clears throat> All right, baby, hold together now. Hey, that felt pretty good. 1188. So that's a mostly smokeless load. Yeah. That felt pretty good. That's it. Good. Yeah, there's not even like a, a gnarly example of like a nasty pressure spike. <laughs> Don't jinx me, man. I didn't say it wasn't going to, I didn't say it was going to do that all the time. <laughs> I didn't say it was going to be okay. Yeah. Did you see that? 1229. Did I see what? Okay, that... The base of those bullets are filled with black powder lube. Yes. It lit that shit on fire and it was smoking down the range. I saw it. Really? Yeah. You'll be able to see it on camera, I'm sure. Because it was obvious to me. No shit. Yeah. Do it again. I want to see if we can get that again. That was cool. It's like its own tracer. Really? <laughs> yeah. You can see it. Did it again. 12 12. Did you not see it? I'm not seeing it. Oh man, I can. I'll take your word for it though. Let me see if it's coming through on the camera. I hope so. It sure is cool looking. I can tell that you were that you went high because of it. Yeah, you can see it on camera. <laughs> 1222. <laughs> the wad? <laughs> A piece of wad stuck on the thing. <laughs> Man, this thing's getting hot. I can't even hardly touch this thing. Huh? Go easy, Your Honor. So am I hitting high out there? That's what it looks like, according to the smoke. There you go. 1224. Yeah. I put that little bit of smoke, uh, black powder in the bottom because these are balloon head cases. Yeah. And I didn't want the smokeless sitting below the primer. Well, it's so light. I did the reverse duplex thing and it's lighting it on it fire, seems like man. It's working pretty well. Hundred and ten, liar. Smoke powered tracer. Smoke powered tracer. <laughs> All right. Last one. Hi. Twelve thirty. Well, that uh, that definitely gets with the program. Mm hmm. Interesting. Doesn't seem to be any worse for wear. I know. No extra horribleness. No. Bitching. It didn't explode. That's that's a good start. Sometimes it just seems like my chronograph is not interested in cooperating at all. And when we started that off there, it just did not want to give me any numbers.
which is a little ridiculous because usually on a lovely day like that, the sun's shining, it'll read fine, no issues. But it really gave me some trouble right at first. So I only got two numbers off that first load. That's the mixed duplex load with 10 grains of reloader 7, 80 grains of 1F Swiss, cushion wad, same projectile, averaged 1371, delivering 2,191 foot-pounds of energy. Considerable. You can see it wallops those targets out there. That stuff is swinging around. It hits those things like a freight train. I wish I could have got some more numbers, but hey, that's the way it goes. It looked like it could have been pretty consistent. I mean, it has a max spread of two as of right now. The smokeless load, 13 grains of unique, cushion wad, same projectile, averaged 860 feet per second. Nice spread of 28 feet per second, which I was a little worried about, being that the powder's sitting a little bit below it. I've had issues with that in the past. Some years ago, I was loading smokeless in 12 gauge brass magtech shells, and I had a lot of trouble with that. Not the case here. This worked just fine. Nice and consistent, delivering 862 foot pounds of energy. Nice plinking load. You can shoot that all day, and it hits point of aim, which is probably my favorite part because this thing shoots about two feet high at this distance at 40 yards, 35 yards. Not an incredible distance, of course, but still you got to aim in the dirt. I really like those unique loads. And then finally, the upside down or Russian duplex load with 10 grains of 3F Swiss first, followed by 30 grains of 5744 on top, 24 gauge half inch cushion wad and the same projectile, averaging 1215, spread of 41, totally acceptable, delivering 1721 foot pounds of energy. That was a little surprising to me. I was expecting those to be somewhere around eh, maybe 1,000, 1,050, and it was 1,200. I believe that's probably that extra black powder kicker charge, making sure that stuff lights off, burned very, very clean. No skeletal remains of powder, no unburned powder, anything looked and worked really, really swell. And the cool thing, I couldn't see it happening while we were out there filming, but my, you heard my brother talking about it. You can see it in the video. That stuff leaves a tracer. That stuff is smoking. I don't know if it's on fire or what, but that grease in there is leaving a trail of smoke as it's going down range. And you can see those shots that were high because you can see right where they go. So that was kind of neat. So overall, my favorite load was the straight, unique, smokeless load. Nice and easy shooting. You could shoot that all day. It still forms the case just fine, no issue, and seemed to be plenty accurate. Now, if you were to step back to 100 yards, that might be a little bit different. But I've seen guys try to shoot things at 10 yards and not be able to hit it with the same kind of setup using just black powder load just to form their cases for Snyder. So this worked out, in my opinion, pretty damn well. Something else I'd like to mention, you might have heard me complain about the first few shots with the mixed duplex load about it really kicking me around. This wallops you. I've heard forever people say things like, well, you know, black powder doesn't kick, you see, it just has a nice gentle push. Well, yeah, if you're shooting 50 grains out of your 50 caliber Hawken of 2F Go-X, then yeah, it's not going to kick you around. You get some big heavy projectile like this with 80 or 90 grains and it will thump you around. It's not 458 Win Mag kind of kick, but it still will shove you around. So, as usual, folks, if you thought this video didn't suck, do me a favor and hit the like button and consider subscribing. And if you did think it sucked, go make your own damn video.